My name is Rachel Hewitt and I'm a senior scientist based in Glasgow. I work within the testing, research and development services team and essentially research and development means that I get to design experiments to try and solve scientific problems and I get to play with different types of technology and equipment. But I'm not only a scientist, I'm also a Curiosity Cube coordinator and Spark volunteer. Spark is our science education volunteering programme and essentially what I do with my team is I travel all across Scotland taking science equipment and science experiments out of the lab and into the classroom for our young learners and I absolutely love just speaking to our young learners and hearing all about the different questions that they might have and how curious their minds are. Science is all around us and so in the Curiosity Cube we learn about how our bodies work, cells, microbiology, even water filtration. You can find science literally everywhere that you look, from maybe, as we've heard just now, wearing masks and lots of different changes in our world, but also in our garden or even our kitchen. And I think if you want to understand more about science, then you're going to understand more about the world that you live in, and effectively you will make a better world. So, are you ready to find out a little bit more about what a scientist does every day? Well, come join me. I'm here in one of the many labs that we have in Glasgow, and I work within a branch of industry called Biosafety Testing. I might think, I don't know what that word means, I've never heard of it before. But the clue is actually in the name. Bio, short for biologicals, and safety, safety. So that means that we take the drugs, the medicines, the vaccines, the products that you take every day to make sure that they're safe and make you feel better. I want you to imagine just for a second that you're feeling quite sick and a bit poorly. You might have a sore tummy, a sore throat, even a sore head. So how do you make yourself feel better? Well, I like to wrap up in a warm blanket, have hot chocolate and watch movies all day. But sometimes that isn't enough and I have to take medicine to make me feel better. But where does that medicine come from? And how do we know that it will work? How do we know that it will actually make us feel better? And that's where our biosafety testing scientists work every day to make sure that the drugs, the vaccines, the products that you take, your medicines, don't contain any viruses, bacteria or anything that could be harmful. Essentially making sure that you're safe every single day. So, let's begin. A big part of my job is actually trying to identify different types of viruses that may be present in the samples and products that you take. And in order to identify those viruses, I have to extract or remove a molecule called DNA, which is short for deoxyribonucleic acid. And DNA is present in all living cells. It's present in me, present in you, and you can find it in your cats and dogs at home, and you can also find it in viruses. So it's a special code, a special recipe that makes us all unique. And we can use that special code to try and identify if there is any virus present in the samples and medicines that you take. So if you'd like to join me and extract some DNA, you're going to need a few things. First of all, you'll need some water, either in a jar or a tube. And you'll also need some cells. So cells are the building blocks of our bodies and we grow them in the lab in flasks. But you might not have these at home and I don't always have them when I'm in the Curiosity Cube, so I use banana. So you'll need some mushed up banana and some water in a tube. You will also need some salt for your kitchen, some washing up liquid. You will also need a second jar or jug to filter your mix, and to filter it, you could use a muslin cloth or a tea towel. And then last, you will need some alcohol. So now that I've got my cells, which are my banana, and they are mixed up in my water, I need to try and form that DNA within the cell. So within the cells we have the DNA and I want to make it into a form that I can actually remove and use in my tests. So first of all, I want you to take your tube and just mix it up nice and gentle. Try and break down the big bits of banana that you might have present and give it a nice little shake. Now that I've done that, I need to get that DNA to form, like I said. So I need to make my DNA less soluble. I want to draw it out of the water. And so to do that, I'm going to add some salt. So just a pinch of salt, add it to your tube, like so. It can be as big as you like. So in the house, you might use salt to add flavour, but we're not adding flavour to our DNA here. We're using that to make sure that our DNA forms. And I want you to just mix it up and try and make that DNA less soluble so we can get it out of the water. So once you feel that that is nice and mixed, you might do that for 10, 20 seconds, as long as you like. I'll give it a final little shake just to help that reaction along. I now need to get that DNA that's formed and go pop and remove it from the cell. So how can I pop open or lyse those cells to get access to my DNA that is in there? So that's where we use the second special ingredient and this is washing up liquid. So you might do the dishes at home or you might have a dishwasher. 
but essentially that is the exact same product that we're using today. So I'm going to take my detergent, add it to my tube, and hopefully my cells will go boop, boop, and I'll be able to get my DNA out of the cells. So you're going to open up your tube or your jar and take a few drops. And so in order to do that, I'm using a little pipette that we call a pasta pipette. And I'm just going to add a few drops of that to my sample. The more you add, the more bubbles. So now I want that reaction mixture, as you can see, I want it to all mix up. I want to remove any of that debris as well and just make sure that it's a nice homogeneous mix. So we mix it up. So you're going to do that for a few seconds and hopefully we're bursting open all those cells and the DNA will then start to float about within that mix. But I think we can do a little bit more. I think we can give it a little bit of a shake. A little bit more, a little bit more. And then I want you to shake it as fast as you can for the next 10 seconds. Stop. Whoa, look at that. So we've mixed it right up. The more bubbles that you get, the better. And if you're trying this at home, why not have a competition to see who can make the most bubbles? But I don't know if you can see, I still have parts of the banana that are floating about there that I don't really want. And I don't want that to contaminate or to mix up my final DNA solution. So I'm going to just take that, give it one final little mix. And now I need to filter my mix. So I've got a special little filter here. And filter means to remove the parts that we don't want. So you take your tube and then you're simply going to add your whole mix into either your tea cloth, your muslin, or you could even use coffee filter paper and just pop it all in. So that full mix into that. And you can see just at the bottom there that it's starting to draw out. Excellent. So I've still got a lot of banana cells right there up at the top, the bits that I don't want. So I'm just going to give it a nice squeeze to make sure that I get as much filtered liquid as possible. There we go. Excellent. So we started off with a really cloudy, dirty mix that contained our salt, which helped the DNA to form. We helped that along by giving it a nice little mix. We then added our detergent, which helped our cells to pop open. And now I filtered to get a far cleaner mix so that then we can try and reform our DNA that is now about in solution. So now that you have this nice, clear mix, we're going to add some alcohol. So if you're doing this at home, I would recommend that you have an adult supervision at all times and that we're only going to use a few droplets of alcohol to be uh, the last part of this experiment. So I'm going to take some of my mix and I'm just going to add it into a smaller little tube, just like this, so that you can see it slightly better. And I'm using my pipette once again. And I'm just going to add it in here. And I want it to be about half full, just so that we can see enough for that reaction to start taking place. I'll pop that there. So there you go, you can see that we now have our DNA solution and in there my DNA is floating about. Just at the beginning when I had to get my DNA out of the cell, I opened those cells, now I want that DNA to reform so that I can actually use it in my tests. So that is where we use our alcohol. So our alcohol is going to help us form a reaction called precipitation. And precipitation essentially means to make solid. It will help our DNA structure form once again. So I'm going to take my vial and I'm just going to add some alcohol to it and I want you to watch and see is there anything happening in that tube. So what do you think has happened? Well right now we have two layers. So we have our layer at the bottom which is quite opaque and a little bit murky and then we have our layer here at the top which is nice and clear. So we have separate phases. So our DNA is actually sitting within that top phase and within those bubbles. I'm not sure if you can quite see those bubbles, but there are a few. So I now want to take my DNA out of this so that I can then use it in my tests to look for different types of viruses and try and identify what could be present in our drugs, vaccines and medical products that we take. I'm going to use a little stick that I have here in my lab. You could use a lollipop stick or a straw, anything that you want. And the key part here is we do not want to mix our phases or our layers. If you do that, you've lost your experiment and you've lost your DNA. So you take your stick and very gently, we're going to start spooling our DNA around on that stick. And I want to get out as much as possible. And I don't know if you can see right there on the edge of my stick, that is some DNA. So right there, we have a big blob of DNA. I'm just gonna try and get some more out because there's quite a lot in that cell. There we go. So we've got our DNA right on the end of the stick. And it is 
quite sticky and white. And we would then take that in our labs and we may test it by PCR. Essentially, we copy the DNA over and over again, looking at a small segment of it to try and identify what type of virus could be there. We might sequence the whole genome, so look at every part of that recipe and code that's present. We might also separate it by size to try and identify do we have one virus versus another type of virus. So our scientists can then take this DNA and use it on lots and lots of different tests. So we used our salt to make our DNA less soluble. We used our detergent to pop open those cells. We filtered and then we used our alcohol to precipitate that DNA. And then what we left with is a very small blob of DNA that you can hopefully see right there. But that little part of DNA will then be used in multiple tests to try and identify what type of virus we have present in our samples. So why not give it a go today and try DNA extraction from some banana cells at home? And just before we go, a question that I always get asked in the Curiosity Cube is, do scientists wear lab coats? Well, I'm wearing a lab coat today and I have my gloves and my safety glasses on, but that's to protect me from the materials and products that I'm using. But not all scientists wear a lab coat. Scientists come in all different shapes and sizes. They may be from different backgrounds as well. A scientist is someone that has a curious mind and always asks questions and wants to find out more. Scientists can be found in the lab or at a computer, even on the beach. There are so many different types of scientists all around the world. So if you think that you have a curious mind or you want to ask questions, maybe you too could just be a scientist one day. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed watching my video and learned a little bit more about what a biosafety testing scientist does and DNA extraction to identify a virus. But if you have any questions, then please feel free to leave them in the comments section. And remember, stay curious.